For me, a good wall finish starts with having a good looking texture on it first. And in this case, I'm doing a crackle finish. And the skip trial texture that's on here now, it's really going to interfere with the crackle effect that I'm going to put on. And so it's important for me to know how to retexture a wall. And I'm going to show you just how I, how I do that with some drywall mud and a trowel. This is what I typically buy is a box, three and a half gallon box. It tends to be the most cost effective way and it's ready mixed. And, and you'll see inside of this box, when it sits for a while, it has a real crumbly texture. I'll reach my hand in here and you'll see this mud, it's not gonna spread on the wall too well. It has a real crumbly texture in it and you want it to be like a smooth, more creamy texture. But all you do is stir it and it gets to more of a texture like this. So here's my stainless steel drywall mud tray. And just by kind of slicing back and forth and stirring this, it immediately starts to get a better, more workable texture. This is what you have to do before you put it on. Don't be too intimidated by the mud. I mean, it is just mud, but this makes it a lot more workable. So now let's go to the wall. Now that I have this stirred up, I didn't have to add water or anything. Just stir it just like that. It's also very helpful to have a good trowel blade. This is a stainless steel eight inch blade and it has a real consistent flex. The blade when it flexes, see that real smooth curve? Cheaper ones will just bend from the back. They don't have as good of handling. The other thing about this is you can see when I point it this way, the blade is bent upwards at the corners and that makes it not gouge my finish. And I actually bent this myself. A lot of times they come like that a little bit, but I bent this one more myself. So let's get some mud on the wall. I've got it in my tray, I've stirred it up. It's a more creamy consistency. You can add water to this. It's made to do that, but I just don't need to for this purpose. So a lot of times when you start putting mud on a wall, it'll start crumbling out from behind the blade and falling on the floor. Well, smear it from the corner. That really helps with that. See how I'm dragging the corner across the middle? And I go like this. That makes the mud not curl around the blade and fall down on the floor as much. So I just get it on the wall first, like this, see? And then I'll start smearing it out. Now we don't need to make this more complicated than it is. We'll just smear mud on the wall. But I also use two hands sometimes because this can be hard on the wrist. And see, I'm still, I'm still trailing with the corner of the blade like this. Once it, you'll see that it'll start to get smoother as you keep putting it on the wall. Then you can start sharpening the angle, pointing it more at the wall and scraping it thinner. And then smearing it in new places. And you just keep covering your wall like this. You see in this nice straight blade just floats right across the old texture. If I were to add more water to this, it would be smoother and, and easier to spread, but it would also shrink more when it dries. This is already a lightweight drywall mud so that it shrinks less. And by not adding water, I'm gonna make it so that I only have to do one coat on this. As I progress down the wall, there's a technique here that's helpful. So see, I've got wet mud here and I'm gonna, and I'll be constantly overlapping the mud that I'm applying with what, it's, what I've already put on the wall. And so there's a technique of keeping, see this, this arced motion that I do that's curved. Because my blade is bent up on the corners, it allows me to flatten that line without gouging it like that. And so I, just lay my blade down and then you'll notice by doing this curved motion it allows this side of the blade to act as the anchor while this side of the blade pivots around it and I get a more steady motion that way. And by doing these curved swipes with it, I get a more level 
surface. And I can keep passing over it until I like the way it looks. But if I just go straight like this all the time, a lot of times it's easier to end up getting a washboard effect where you'll get ripples in the surface that can show up, especially if you put a paint that has any kind of a gloss to it, the light can catch those. And so to get a nice smooth surface, it's good to kind of move in these arced motions. This nice straight blade is great for getting these edges. I'll get some mud out of my tray. And see, I'm careful not to have any mud on this back side, so I can lay it right down on this baseboard. And then I'll just squish it on there and start pulling up. And I can go all along the base like that. I don't need any tape. A nice sharp edge of my new smooth texture. Now just for giggles, I'll show you how the texture is done. Even though I just want this wall to be smooth, I'm just going to show you in case someone's feeling ambitious and wants to add your own texture. I've added a lot of water. Your texture coat is a lot more watery. See, look how, I'm going to see if I can show you this. This is a lot more soupy than the first coat that I put on. You want to do this on a base coat that's not sanded. If I were to sand this, it creates a layer of dust that causes my texture not to stick as well and doesn't respond to the same. So most trial textures are done like this. I'm going to dip it in this tray and I get it so that there's this particular... I like when it has this mound on the end of the blade, real consistent like that. And then I'll take it and when I feel it start to pull, I'll hold it like this first and then I'll start laying it down when I feel it start to pull. And you can see that it creates that skipping pattern. I'll wipe the trowel off in the tray so that I can smooth out my texture without adding more to it. Then I'll start coming over this lightly. In always the same direction because it maintains that same pattern. Do some more up here. And so different trowel textures are just the varying degrees of this same technique. So I can turn this into a Santa Fe texture by putting more pressure and pulling it out smoother. So watch, I'll do that. If I just keep going over this, the little gaps in it become smaller as it becomes a more consistent, smoother coat. Now, by varying the direction a little bit, I get rid of the washboards that I described earlier. But if I keep going opposite directions, then I'll kind of lose that natural textured look. So see, smoother and smoother. This texture is now what you'd call a Santa Fe because it's, it's got not nearly as many of the little pits in it. When I first put it on, Probably just call it a skip trowel texture. This base layer of dry mud will suck the moisture out of this top coat so that this will dry a lot quicker and then when I come and overlap, I can overlap right onto what I already did and it's already starting to get hard so that it won't ruin it. And I just keep wiping off my blade. Wipe off the blade. Pass over it, wipe off the blade. So now that there's two planes, there's this wet layer on top of the dry layer. That dry layer helps to firm up this top layer so that I can keep going over it. And I want to keep wiping the mud off the blade every time I pass over it so I don't ruin the texture that I made. But I can keep smoothing over this and almost get rid of all my lines so that I can really minimize the amount of sanding that I have to do. Typically though, a texture coat would be done with a, a wider trowel, maybe a 12 or a 14 inch trowel blade, not this, not this 8 inch one. When I take it and, and do this, I'll have, because of the short blade, I'll have more areas that are longer and, and less consistent. You can see larger areas. A bigger blade will make a more consistent pattern. So it does just depend what you're after. Well, that's it. So now I just got to get it painted.